Oh, man. You know. Ah, uh, today's a good day. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Carving Up Live, right here on Facebook Live, on YouTube, and on Twitter. As always, I'm Bryson Carver. It's great to be with you on this wonderful Thursday. At least if you're not a Green Bay Packers fan, that is. I don't know if y'all heard the news in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And by the way, Packers have a big fan base, so all around America. But uh, it certainly appears that Aaron Rodgers is no more. Which can't be all that good to hear if you are a fan of the Green Bay Packers. But I'm here. Cheesehead Ozzy, as uh, my friend Grady Edwards, shout out to Grady, dubbed it. I'm here to make you feel better. I'm here to try and ease the pain and, and suffering that's that you've had to deal with uh, in the past uh, 24 to 48 hours or so. Um, I am Bryson Carver, like I said, as always. We've got a great show. We're going to talk about my Golden State Warriors blowing another road game after a 50-piece 50 50 by Steph Curry. Darren Waller being traded to the Giants. Lots to discuss in that regard. I, I think it says a lot about the New York Giants and what teams could learn from them. Uh, let's see what else we got. The John ja Morant situation, I'll get into that. Uh, we got more information on that. And Ezekiel Elliott was released by the Dallas Cowboys yesterday. Uh, so a plethora of things to talk about, not to mention March Madness. The madness has already begun. Shout out to Furman for making my bracket look pretty good because I did predict them. Me along with my host, shout out to uh, uh, shout out to Jamel who was on the show yesterday. We both picked for Furman to win. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's, it's, a good, it's a good day. It's a good day. Especially for a person like me who hates the Green Bay Packers. Uh, oh, there's my sister in the comments. She says, I'm ready to feel the love. Okay. In reference to Jordan Love. And Patrick Brown is in the comments. He says, let the Jordan Love era begin. Oh, it will begin. And I will get to Green Bay's side of things uh, in just a moment. Um, so before I do... Let me take this off. Let's take the sun. Let's take the sunglasses off. The shades off for a minute, because I want to talk about the Jets aspect of it. But before I do, here's the official announcement. You might as well hear from the man himself, one Aaron Rodgers, announcing that he intends to play for the New York Jets. Take a listen. Here, you know, I think since Friday, uh, I made it clear that my intention was to play, and my intention was to play for the New York Jets. Okay. Um, mm. And. I haven't been holding anything up at this point. It's been compensation that the Packers are trying to get. Packers would like to move on. They've let me know that in so many words. They let, they've let other people know that in direct words. Um, and because I still have that fire and I, I, and I want to play and I would like to play in New York, uh, it's just a matter of um, you know getting that done at this point. Okay, so according to Aaron Rodgers, he's going to play for the Jets in 2023, and the Packers uh, essentially are just trying to finalize the compensation. Although the reports that we've read all week have, in, have, have insinuated that the deal's already done, the compensation, the terms of the trade have already been agreed to. It's just a matter of whether Aaron Rodgers wants to make his decision. So conflicting reports, who the heck knows what's going on? What we do know is that, barring something crazy and unforeseen, which this is Aaron Rodgers we're talking about, so who knows? This trade appears to be done. We'll learn the, the, the compensation, the terms of a trade as time goes on. But Aaron Rodgers is going to be New York Jet in 2023. Now, I'm hearing a lot of Jets fans. I know two of them. Shout out to John Rivera of the Fan Perspective Podcast. He's been he's been begging the Jets to make this deal for Aaron Rodgers for a long time. Uh, Alfred Parsar Jr., maybe not as much as John Rivera has been, you know, at least hoping for a franchise quarterback. You certainly got an upgrade in Aaron Rodgers. He's a Jets fan. And he's got a podcast here uh, called the Rocky Field Jets Podcast on the grid. But... I hate to be the bear of bad tidings, but uh, this does not guarantee the New York Jets are going to be a playoff team this season. I'll tell you why. A lot of Jets fans have made the case that, hey, we had a top three defense in the NFL, and that is absolutely true. Sauce Gardner was unbelievable. The, the undeniable Defensive Rookie of the Year. I'm shocked he didn't win unanimously because I never heard of anything about him uh, w winning that award unanimously. Uh, you've got obviously uh, the 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 uh, the brothers Quinn and Williams, his brother as well. Defensively, offensively, you've got a plethora of talent. Brees Hall should be coming back from an ACL tear uh, stronger than ever. It appears the Jets are going to make some moves, possibly in free agency, to shore up that offensive line. They've got a number one talent at wide receiver. Not to mention they've added Alan Lazard, which 
More on that in a second when I get to Aaron Rodgers individually. Uh, but they've added talent to the offensive side of the ball, and God knows they're set defensively. Here's the bad news. You play in one of the tougher divisions in the NFL. You play in a division where Josh Allen is the best quarterback among those four teams with the Buffalo Bills. The Bills, I think it's safe to say, are the best team. Certainly they've proven that over the last three to four years. The Miami Dolphins, while I have major, major questions about Tua Tungavailoa, and I don't buy him at all, I cannot deny that roster is really good. To my Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell, we'll see if they bring back Mike Gusecki. Uh, a, a drastically improved offensive line. Defensively, they've got a, a new coordinator in there, Vic Fangio, to try and sure things up, clean things up on that side of the ball. And Mike McDaniel has, it appears to be a pretty solid offensive coach. So Miami is looking up. The Patriots, they've had a decent offseason. Bill O'Brien, while I don't love the hire, he's a better hire at offensive coordinator than Matt Patricia, who is a, a defensive coach. And they just added Juju Smith-Schuster. So things seem to be looking up for all the AFC East teams. There's no question the Jets have upgraded at quarterback. Here's the problem. How much are they upgrading at the quarterback position? Because I'm here, Jets fans, forget playoffs, which they have not been to, in to since 2010. I'm starting to hear talks of Lombardi, which, of course, they have not done since Joe Namath guaranteed that they would all the way back in Super Bowl three. Here's the quarterback that they're getting in Aaron Rodgers. 19th in yards per game last year. 26th in interceptions. 16th in passer rating. 26th in QBR. And they're getting, they're getting a quarterback who has not had a 300-yard passing game since week 14 of the 2021 NFL season. It's better than Zach Wilson and Mike White, I guess, but I don't know. In that AFC where you've got the defending Chiefs coming back and appearing to reload, when you've got the Bills looking to improve on the, the mistakes they made last year, Miami appears to be a, a better football team last year. Even a team that I, I don't like really at all, the New England Patriots, they seem to be at least buying somewhat into the offensive side of the ball. You think about Cincinnati Bengals, what did they just do? They just went out and got Orlando Brown from the Kansas City Chiefs to be Joe Burrow's left tackle. Pittsburgh's going to have an improved play at the quarterback position in Kenny Pickett, I believe, because most rookie quarterbacks take a big step. There's exceptions, but most of them take a big step in year two. Denver got Sean Payton. So Russell's not going to be, I don't think Russell's going to be the Russell of old in Seattle, but there's no question. I mean, Sean Payton's made Taysom Hill work. Okay, he's won, he's won games with Taysom Hill at quarterback. Surely to goodness he can do so with Russell Wilson. And a lot of the money, you know, so much of the money that the Denver spent in, on improving that offensive line this offseason. All of those teams, I'm mentioning the AFC before I even get to the Jets, who have a coach at Robert Sala, who I like, but I'm not sure is 100% the guy. They have an offensive line that needs to improve. They've got, they've got to address in the draft free agency somehow, some way in order to protect Aaron Rodgers. And defensively, while they're great, we know great defenses often aren't as good the next year. Just look at history. There, there's, there's very, very few exceptions where you got a phenomenal defense that's just as good the next year. It's rare. And so I, I don't know if it makes the Jets a playoff team, much less a Super Bowl team. Now, as for Aaron Rodgers, I think it's very fascinating because... Aaron Rodgers was discussing that over the last couple of years, you're not bringing, talking about the Green Bay Packers, you're not bringing in enough wide receiver talent. You are not bringing in enough guys to help me win. You're not bringing in the requisite talent in order for me to compete for a Super Bowl. And by the way, as somebody who's not an Aaron Rodgers defender, I actually kind of defended him on that. I'm like, okay, outside of Devontae Adams... A lot of uh, you know that three three little word I use jags, or four, if you I guess yeah yeah three 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 letter jags just a guy uh, you know a lot of a lot of just guys out there Alan Lazard and, well that's funny uh Alan Lazard is a Jet today reports are that the Jets are going after Randall Cobb and Mercedes Lewis aging skill position players who Aaron Rodgers has said for years isn't good enough but yet he wants to bring them to the Jets. And that precisely, ladies and gentlemen, is what the Jets are going to have to be dealing with, at least for this year. Who knows if Aaron Rodgers retires after this year? I don't have the, the energy to devote to that. Heck, I barely have enough energy to cover this. 
But for Aaron Rodgers, what I think is is fascinating is that there was a quote. I've got the quote right here. Because, again, that that was from the Pat McAfee show where he announced that he was going to the Jets. Uh, Here's the quote from Aaron Rodgers, uh, which was said a lot to me. He said, I got to admit, he was talking about the darkness tree. I got to, quote, I've got to admit, I went to the darkness 90% retiring and 10% playing. Now I I came out of the darkness, something changed. I'm not exactly sure what that was, but something changed. And I got to I got back to my phone after five days off. I realized that, that there had been a little bit of a shift. And I heard from multiple people that I trust around the league, players mostly, that there was some shopping going on. They were interested in actually moving me. You don't say. Yeah, when off season after off season after off season, this is now three in a row where you've been the focal point for negative reasons. 2020, they draft Jordan Love. Do I blame Aaron Rodgers for being ticked off? I don't. You drafted my replacement in the first round instead of getting me a guy who can help me now? Yeah, I'm going to be a little ticked off. I, I'm fine with Aaron not liking that. But he drags it on and on and on publicly taking shots at Brian Gutekunds, the general manager, at Matt LaFleur, at the coaching staff, at the organization, at Mark Murphy, the team president. In 2021, You've got the, uh, yeah, it was 2021 when he was reportedly asking out of Green Bay. Remember, there was he, Aaron Rodgers, it was on draft day. I remember covering it on the show. Aaron Rodgers wants out of Green Bay. And nothing happened. It was just smoke and mirrors. And then he did that press conference during training camp, taking shots at the organization. I mean, everybody in the organization, including his own teammates, who he refused to work out with in the offseason. Last year, it was the very strange ayahuasca thing that he would seem to be more concerned with that than actually getting better at playing football and actually trying to put himself and his team in position to advance the playoffs instead of losing at home in the NFC Championship game as the favorite, as the MVP. And then this year, it's the it's the darkness retreat. Yeah, when you have to keep dealing with your star player, your best player, the most valuable player to your franchise constantly year in and year out over and over and over, being the focal point of attention for negative reasons off the field, not being committed to football while we're paying you in excess of $50 million. And then you read this quote. There was some shopping going on that they were actually interested in moving me. Yeah, I would too. I don't blame them. Aaron Rodgers is a declining player, and notice this: the Packers put up what do they what do they call it? Production and tolerance. They'll put up with you. Not just the Packers; any organization will put up with you if you produce. But when Aaron Rodgers declines rapidly, again, we will show the numbers: nineteenth in yards per game, twenty sixth in interceptions, sixteenth in passer rating, twenty sixth in QBR, and no three hundred yard passing games. And you go nine and eight. I'm sorry, you, you go eight and nine, if I'm not mistaken. Finish third in your division. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> you lose what was in effect a playoff game to the Detroit Lions and scored 16 points against one of the worst defenses in professional football. The third consecutive year that you have lost a home game to end the season. They'll put up with you when you're winning MVPs. But when you're missing the playoffs, you're like, hey. <laughs> We could do that with Jordan Love. <laughs> what? I mean, well, why, why are we worrying about Aaron Rodgers? And we, like, we, we, we don't have to pay Jordan Love near what we have to pay Aaron Rodgers. So, yeah, you don't say that they moved on from you, Aaron. To the Jets, I say, good luck. As the guy over the phone and taken told Liam Neeson. Now, that guy didn't end very well for him, but you get the point. As for Green Bay, let's put the shades back on. Boy, you in trouble. Packers, you in trouble. (laughs) So, Green Bay will now move on to Jordan Love, who they selected with their first-round pick in 2020. To Jordan Love's credit, he obviously did not play any games in 2020. He started one game in 2021 when Aaron Rodgers was uh, was out with COVID. When he, you know, lied to the lied to the Packers, lied to the NFL about his vaccination status. Like I said, I want to be very clear: if players decide not to get vaccinated, I didn't have an issue with it. If you were honest about it, Aaron Rodgers was not. 
Jordan Love started that game against the Chiefs, didn't play very well. Packers only put up seven points. He looked very overwhelmed at Arrowhead, which, in fairness to him, a lot of people do. A lot of quarterbacks do. And then last year, Aaron Rodgers gets injured second half against the Philadelphia Eagles, who we saw, you know, waltz their way to the Super Bowl and came back close to winning it. Jordan Love actually looked pretty good. Was more efficient than Aaron. Looked more mobile than Aaron. There was some real good stuff happening there in terms of the development you saw from this young quarterback. The bad news is for the Packers, though, the standard is not get to the playoffs. The standard is not, let's see the improvement from our young quarterback. Folks, Jordan Love is going into year four. He's had three years to sit behind Aaron Rodgers. Sound familiar? When Aaron Rodgers sat three years behind Brett Favre? Yeah, here's the difference. Aaron Rodgers was predicted by some in the media to be the number one overall pick back in that 2005 draft. He was not. He slid all the way down to 25th, if I'm not mistaken. Alex Smith went number one to the Niners. Uh, obviously, again, more motivation for Aaron Rodgers, and obviously he, he proved to be quite significantly a better quarterback than, than Alex Smith was, and Alex Smith had a good career, but Aaron Rodgers obviously was, was better. Jordan Love was never rumored to be the number one overall pick. They were talking about Burrow. They were talking about Tua. I was really high on Justin Herbert that year. And the Packers have weapons. Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs. You got some stuff to work with. Defensively, came on at the end of the season. See if they can get better. See if they can improve. And you certainly know that Jordan Love, at least you hope so, will be more committed to the offseason than Aaron Rodgers was. But again, Packers fans, you know this better than I. The standard is not making the playoffs. The standard is not seeing the improvement of your young quarterback. The standard is Super Bowls. Heck, the trophy's named after your Hall of Fame head coach who won the first two Super Bowls. This is an organization that has had two of the 10 greatest quarterbacks of all time. In a 30-year stretch, they have two Lombardis to show for it. Seven MV MVPs combined. Two championships. Why on God's green earth do I think that Jordan, or what I think rather, that Jordan Love would be better or any different. Do I anticipate Jordan Love winning a Super Bowl and winning four league MVPs? I can say Aaron Rodgers, uh, uh, you know, uh, disappointed, underachieved. Yeah, but the guy is still first bout Hall of Famer. Got my issues with him. He's a first bout Hall of Famer, no question about it. You sure you're getting of that in Jordan Love? Yeah, I hate to tell you, Green Bay, even in the weak NFC, I'm not 100% sure you're a playoff team. So it's really a lose-lose situation, if you think about it, for Green Bay and the Jets. The Jets have to take on the problem that the Packers have been dealing with for years in terms of their commitment or lack thereof of the franchise quarterback, and the Packers are now stuck with a guy who they don't even know can play or not. Only time will tell. But uh, like I said, Green Bay... <laughs> Y'all in trouble. Big time. Detroit's better. Minnesota's better. Chicago's a mess. They're, they're Chicago. But you feel like a second or third place team in the NFC North. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.